out there with our neighbors to the north in Canada, where since I believe 2008, they've been doing referrals in Canada for veterans and reimbursing veterans for up to an eighth of day of what? cannabis. Yes. Canada. Yes, Canada. <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So even though I would love to see it where you just go to the VA and they send you home with cannabis, just like any other medication, I think it's an incredible idea to allow veterans to go out, find what works best for them, around them, and then be reimbursed for that on, on a regular basis. Yeah. Wow. That's a big, that's a big, big deal to a lot of veterans is the price. Yes. It, I, I know that on the medical side, it's it's a fair amount cheaper, um, but it's still like hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a month for some vets. Yep. It's just, it's beyond for most people, but for veterans, there are other life expenses that come out, you know? Right. And it's not so much that the medical is cheaper. It's that you're not having to pay the taxes because I have a dispensary in my town that's adult use. And I go there a lot of times to fill in the gaps of, I can't make it to the medical, which is at least uh, half an hour, 40 minutes away. Mm -hmm. I can go there and sometimes they have lower prices. But with the tax, I end up paying a little more. Is that Caroline's? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I love Caroline's. Hi, Caroline. Yeah, Caroline's is, is incredible and a, and a great asset to the town as well. Um, but yeah, with the medical program and these discounts, like for instance, I started the medical discount program for 100% disabled veterans. And you can run into some dispensaries that will stack discounts. Like last week, I went to uh, Comcan and Millis, and they were having half off of their edibles. So I ended up getting half off of it and then another 45% off of that. So my bill came out to $760. I only had to pay $230. I saved over 500 bucks. Wow. Yes. So yeah, you know, turning to the legal market is it definitely has its upsides. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the illicit market, yeah, the, the, the prices are better and there's plenty of times I get some great medicine. It's just the the consistency of it like right now so being able to purchase that and that was just for sleep so i use gummies for sleep but i i have a 30-day supply now and it only cost me 200 dollars as opposed to you know coming out of pocket for 700 dollars, which is uh, like you said it's a huge barrier for veterans having to literally sit down with my family and you know say all right we're gonna have to pull back on this bill a little bit and go late into this bill so mm -hmm. i can afford that instead of just emailing my doctor at the VA and getting, you know, my fentanyl patches in the mail. Yeah, yeah. We we have that same problem in our family. Like we have to sit down at the beginning of the month and budget for marijuana, for medical marijuana. Right. And it's like every other medicine that he gets is free through the VA. It's mailed to us. Everything's done over the phone. Right. But with, with the medical marijuana, I have to go to the local dispensary, you know, mm -hmm. um, take time out of my day. And we have to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars a week for for the, the for the right stuff that works for his issues right it's just it's so difficult for for other families who don't have income like we do as well and that was yeah. something that you know really troubles me when i go down to dc and i'm meeting with members of congress and you know i, I go down there and, and advocate for cannabis use and for through the va and i will get hit with well what's the cost and i come back with you should have been more concerned with that when you first, you know, sent them there. That is, mm -hmm. that's, that's the cost of war. You mm -hmm. pay anything you have to, to deliver on your side of that contract, because the, the Americans that sign the paper and go over, aren't ever doubting it or saying, or pulling out the contract and being like, well, I don't have to do that. Cause I didn't sign that. But then the other person having that contract, you know, to say you can't have access to something because of, these the scheduling of this drug of this of this plant as something as deadly as heroin it, it doesn't make any sense and, and it's, it's just disgusting that making that decision to become a better husband better better spouse better sibling better parent all of that gets questioned because of the price of it and it's like no every single person that went over there their families back home deserve the best version of that person and if cannabis helps them be that then they should be providing it and i'm especially excited about your um initiative to move towards covering substance abuse disorder with opioids because um opioid overdoses especially among veterans that's a huge issue and safely moving from opioids to cannabis has saved thousands and thousands of lives 
that's an episode for another time. But <laughs> right. I just wanted I wanted to thank you for for moving in the right direction for our local veterans because I know that it takes someone like you who has experience of his own to realize that something needs to happen, and then the kind of person that has the drive like you have to make something happen and to actually get into positions like you do in your local town and to contact your local representatives and then to go to DC and just to keep pushing with actual bills that actually change legislation. And that impacts families like mine. So honestly, a heartfelt thank you to you for all you do. Thank you. And and you and, and your husband and all the other veterans are my reason for doing it. It's, it's like, you tell me the barrier and I will go, I'll either climb it, go around it, dig under it or blow it up. But I'm not leaving that barrier until it's gone because there's going to be generations that follow us and they're going to be sitting there like I was like, what am I supposed to do? How, how mm-hmm. do I do this? And just to think that, you know, if, if it's if it saved one life, then all of the heartache, all of the time, it's all worth it. And now for this week's cannabis news. Speaking of adding more qualifying conditions for medical marijuana cards, lawmakers in Ohio have agreed to add three new conditions to the state's list of qualifiers. Huntington's disease, terminal illnesses, and spasticity. But the lawmakers voted to reject petitions to add autism spectrum disorder, restless leg syndrome, and panic disorder to the list. You can now get a joint in exchange for a jab in Washington state. Washington's Liquor and Cannabis Board announced this week that state-licensed cannabis retailers would be allowed to provide one free marijuana joint to any adult who comes in to receive a COVID-19 vaccination at an in-store vaccination clinic. And Connecticut, you were so close, but lawmakers have unfortunately decided to put the state's cannabis legalization bill on hold. Connecticut's House Speaker did say this week that the bill may be taken back up during a special session later this summer. And the National Football League has pledged $1 million to fund a study on cannabis and pain relief. The NFL said it wanted to fund research into alternative pain medications to opioids. The league said it will be splitting the money between at least five different research proposals, including studies of both THC and CBD for pain, after dozens of football players admitted that cannabis helps them to recover off the field. Make sure you're following us on social media at Different Leaf, and I'm at Brit the British. Check out our website, differentleaf.com, where you can buy four issues of our award-winning cannabis journal for $20. Thanks as always to our lovely producer, Andrea Maraskin, and thanks to Homebody for the music. 